This conference will now be recorded. So I'm in my management console. I have just logged into my AWS uh, account and currently I'm in Mumbai region. Now, whenever you start uh, designing your infrastructure or creating an EC2 insert, the first step you need to do is you need to select a region in which you want to create a infrastructure. So you can see a list of your infrastructure. You can go in any of this region and create the infrastructure. Currently, as I am in India, so I will go with the Mumbai region. Now, one more thing. Whenever you uh, choose a region to deploy your, uh, you know, infrastructure to design your infrastructure, you should always choose a region which is at least nearest to you, or it should nearest to your client. It will help them to uh, provide the low latency network from the client to the data. So you should design your infrastructure in such a way that it should always nearest to your. Okay. Now let's just have a small recap of what we have seen so far in the EC2 theoretical session. Like uh, we have seen, uh, first of all, what is AMI? That is Amazon Machine Image, which is nothing but an operating hey, system. With, you know, uh, your screen is not moving. Uh, are you talking? Okay. Yeah, I'm just Hello? talking. Uh, okay. Sorry, can you there just was a dashboard? Yeah, I can see it now. Yeah. Yeah, it's just the EC2 dashboard only. So what we have seen in the last session is like, uh, first of all, the term was AMI, that is Amazon Machine Image, which is nothing but the template, which gives you uh, no instruction of how to uh, deploy your operating system, how to boot up your operating system, that particular machine. And uh, apart from this operating system, what are the other packages you want to install? So AMI is just a thing, uh, AMI is a template that will give you a description about how and which operating system do you want to install. The second thing that you need to select is uh, instance type, that is a processor. AWS is offering various processing in different fields, in general optimized technique, in general purpose, compute optimized, memory optimized, accelerated computing, and storage optimized. So these are the five major categories uh, that Amazon is distributing its uh, computing power. Then once it is selected, then we have seen, um, that is user data, bootstrapping of your EC2 instance, how to bootstrap your, how to execute your data, how to execute your EC2 instance in a much faster way. So, and then we have seen EBS part, that is the volume that we are attaching, how and what are the types of EBS volume you have and which one you should go with that. So, our first step in this today's session was to uh, create an EC2 instance and we'll see the process how to do that. So here you need to just simply click on launch institute instance. Let me know if you have any lag in, uh, in having a screen or resolution. Then, then this is a page where this is the first step that you can choose an AMI. Now here you can see there are different kinds of AMIs available. That is Amazon Linux 2, which is provided by Amazon itself. It's just a plain Red Hat vanilla. And uh, it has, you can see here, GCC 7.3, and GLIBC and some other packages has installed. On the another AMI, there is a CLI installed, Python, Ruby, Perl, Java, and the repository like Docker, PHP, MySQL, 4 So these are this kind of uh, packages are also packed with this AMI. Same, you can just scroll down and see Red Hat, Suzy, Nut, Ubuntu Server, my Windows. There are different editions of Windows available. Again, Linux available. Now, whenever you see here a tag that is free tier eligible, which means uh, whatever the operating system you are choosing, uh, whenever it says that it is free tier eligible, you are go not going to pay anything for this operating system. Basically, all Linux systems are uh, license free. But if you see uh, in the Windows also, AWS is offering you free tier eligible, which means for this Windows server, you do need to buy a license will come under your uh, free tier eligibility. 
So this is just a quick start of the top uh, uh, AMI. If you have created your own AMI, your own custom AMI, let's say I want to create your AMI with the Red Hat uh, operating system with Apache, PHP, and MySQL installed. So I can create my own AMI. You will see that in the later session. And uh, I can use it directly when for the next time. So whatever the AMI you will hear, you will find it here in the My AMI section. Then there is the AWS Marketplace. And just AWS market says some big companies are uh, you know selling their own operating system uh, like a security based operating system uh, and operating system with the WordPress predefined pre-installed everything so this kind of uh, you know uh, different AMIs are available which are these big companies are selling here here you can see there is a 10 micro deep security which is offering from uh, one cent point one cents per hour per host so you can just buy if you want to have a security related uh, things in your uh, you know a project then you can install any of this you can subscribe for this this will have additional charges <clears throat> just a second sorry yeah and the fourth option is community AMI, where you can go with uh, you know uh, you can select an operating system if you want to go on Amazon in that center or if you want to search a particular operating system you can do it here if you want to go with the Fedora you can see the list of other uh, you know various uh, versions available of this Fedora atomic host cloud based uh, raw height etc etc <clears throat> then here also you can choose the architecture whichever you want you want a 32 bit architecture or 64 bit architecture and there is a root device tab that is do you want to go with the ebs or instance mode now once again ebs volumes are persistent volume storage which means even if you stop the machine then also your data will persist throughout the time until you delete the data until you terminate that volume your data will always persist but in case of instance store your data will not persist if you stop the machine and if you or if you restart the machine once you have performed this kind of action your data will be lost so instance drive instance store is something like a temporary volume storage even if you restart your machine the data whatever is uh, residing in that volume will be lost so in this way you can select a particular operating system if you want to have a specific one or you can just go with the uh, just pretty eligible Let's go with the simple one. Then the second step is to choose an instance type. Like we have different families here: general process, uh, general purpose uh, instance type. Then we have op compute optimized, GPU memory optimized. Similarly, now each of this category is offering you multiple different instance type. Like we can see here, the first is T2 Nano, which is offering you one CPU and half GB RAM. T2 micro is offering 1 CPU, 1 GB RAM. T2, T2 small is offering 1 GB, 2 GB RAM. Now one important point here, you do need to always select an instance type which uh, that's, that uh, you know uh, support your current uh, requirement. Like if you want currently 1 CPU and 1 GB RAM only, then you should opt for the T2 micro only. You should not consider what will be your future requirement. In future, if you want to have two CPU, four GB, then you should not select right now. Whatever your current requirement is, you should select that uh, amount of storage only. You still have an option once you have created to upgrade the uh, you know instance type or to downgrade your instance type. So no worries about that. And it is a AWS best practice. And as for the well architecture framework, that you should always meet your requirement, meet your current requirement. You should not uh, think about your future requirements and uh, start working on it right now. You can easily design your infrastructure using, uh, you can easily update and downgrade your infrastructure whenever required. So this T2 micro is again pretty eligible. That is, you will not charge for this uh, processor. Then next. Now this is a basic uh, configuration setting like uh, Number of instances. If you launch, if you want to launch a multiple instance with same configuration, you can just here enter the count number of instances you want to launch. In your free tier eligible or your basic plan, 
you can create maximum up to 20 EC2 instance. Post that 22 uh, instance, you are not allowed. Whenever you try to launch an EC2 instance, you will encounter a problem that you cannot create more than that. If you want to go beyond that 20 instance, you need to take a support ticket from the Amazon and then they will increase your limit and then you can create your other number of EC2 instances. But the basic or uh, default limit of the creating an EC2 instance is maximum 20. Then there is a second option of purchasing option like if you want to go for spot instances. So basically it's unchecked, so which means like whatever the EC2 instance you are creating, that will be on demand EC2 instance. And if I click on spot instance, yes, so it shows me what is the current rate of spot instance. Yes. So it says that 0 0.0043 cent uh, dollar. So which means like if you compare it, uh, on demand, the on demand will be definitely higher than this. It should be around 0.01 to something. So compared to on demand, this spot instance uh, gives you much better option uh, when it comes to pricing. But you cannot rely on this kind of spot interest. If the Amazon demand increases, then the price of this instance type increases. And if it collides, if it conflicts your bidding price, so here you can bid like my bidding price is 0 0.45. So until it reaches this value reaches to 0 0.45, I will have my instance with me. But the moment it reaches to this, uh, you know, uh, limit, then Amazon will send a notification that uh, it is bidding, it is meeting your bidding price so you have two options either uh, in, increase your bidding amount or you have two minutes to to take a backup of your data otherwise after two minutes your data will be lost so it gives you two minutes so if you want to have a test uh, infrastructure then you can go with this for for instance type of infrastructure or if you unselect this then this will be on demand so it will be with you until you want there is two important points from the networking section that is network and subnet, which is selecting a VPC and selecting a subnet. Now we haven't touched the VPC part yet, but just to give you an overview, a VPC is your own private cloud where you reserve a large number of uh, IP addresses for you so that all, uh, all the uh, instances you launch, all the resources you launch that can have a separate IP range for you that is in your own private cloud. Whereas a subnet is a small group of that network. For example, if you have created a VPC of uh, let's say 65,000 IP addresses, now you can divide this 65,000 IP addresses into multiple groups, let's say 1,000 in each group. And these groups can be used to launch public instances, private instances, and uh, database instances etc so in the vpc part we will term again once again with this network and subnet we'll let you uh, at the time we will discuss again and we will come back to the ec2 part and we'll see how to select now different vpc how to uh, customize the subnet etc then the third part is auto assign public ip that is you want your ip address uh, that you, that you want your ec2 instance to have a public ip or not basically in your production account, you will never have a public IP assigned to your EC2 instance. But with a private instance, with a private IP, you will not be able to log into your machine. So the EC2 instance that we are creating, this is a public instance. That is anyone who has a key pair, who has a password, and who has the authentication to, uh, you know, uh, have a security code authentication to uh, log into this machine will be able to log in. You will see what exactly is, but you can select enable or disable this. If you enable this option, then you will get a public IP. With public IP, you can easily be able to log into your machine. Then the uh, second thing is the placement group. So a placement group is a group where you can add multiple nodes or multiple EC2 instances now these instances together will combine together in a group and they will have a 10 gbps of high internet connection for example you want to create a cluster or you want to create a uh, cluster of let's say four nodes okay so all these four easy instances that you are creating you can attach to this placement group 
So what will happen at the Amazon data centers, all these four instances will be separated from other EC2 instances and they will be grouped together with a 10 Gbps of internet connection. So that any internal communication, if they want to have a you know, high speed internet connection between internally, they can perform that. For example, like gaming websites or torrent, uh, etc. or cryptocurrency kind of thing, if you want to do with a high internet kind of bandwidth, then you can attach this into your placement group. So all the nodes within that group will be have a high internet connection and they can have they can interact with one uh, you know EC2 instance with another EC2 instance easily. Then we have seen two categories. Uh, then we have also seen a category of uh, pricing model that is reserved instances. The limitation of reserved instances is like you need to buy a reserved instances for at least one year or three years. There is no term for two years and four years. There is only one year and three years. Now, if you don't want to have a server for one year or three years, you can create here a capacity reservation, create a capacity reservation, and you can go with one month, two months, three months also. But here you will not get decimal discount as compared to one year and three year of subscription. You will get a small discount comparatively to on demand, but you cannot compare this discount with these of instances. So capacity reservation is a new feature which is introduced in 2018, mid 2018. And through which you can reserve a particular EC2 instance site for months in terms of months and days. Then we have IAM role. That is if you want to attach an IAM role, that is if you want to this EC2 instance want to communicate with other AWS services like S3, SNS, SQS. Now you can attach a role accordingly and it will uh, that these EC2 instances will now be able to talk to other EC2 instances or other AWS services. So we will uh, go through once again through this. Uh, once we have created this EC2 instance, we still have an option to go with, uh, to attach an IAM role. Then shutdown behavior. Whenever you click on uh, shutdown this EC2 instance, what kind of thing you want to do? Do you want to stop the server or terminate the server? So basically, if we go with the default one, then there is enable termination protection. That is accidental deletion of your EC2 instance. Just imagine, like in your in uh, in your AWS account, there are managers and there are some intern peoples or junior peoples in your AWS account, and they were just looking into your AWS account, how you creating or how they are just monitoring your AWS services. And during the process, they are they have deleted the wrong EC2 instance. You have told them to delete some other EC2 instance, but they have deleted the production EC2 instance. So this kind of this kind of deletion will be called as accidental deletion. Uh, it's not an intentional deletion. So you can enable this option, or you still have an option to enable once you have created this EC2 instance with this protection. Whenever this user will try to delete that EC2 instance, he won't be able to delete that. This uh, at that time he will get a pop-up notification that you cannot uh, you cannot delete this EC2 instance because this is a protection enable. You need to first disable this protection and then you will be able to terminate this action. So it helps your production account to uh, from accidental deletion. Then there is a monitoring service. That is CloudWatch is already monitoring your all the AWS services, but with the basic package of five minutes of interval. So whatever the uh, whatever the cloud monitoring you are performing, that will be happening at five minute interval. Like CPU utilization, disk read and route operation, all the things will be happening at five minute interval. Now, if you want to have detailed monitoring, that is one minute uh, interval, then you can enable this option. This will have additional charges. Okay. So by default, you will get the five minutes of uh, interval duration. And if you go for the uh, detail monitoring, you will encounter additional charges and you will get per minute of uh, data. Then tenancy. Now, to understand tenancy, what exactly is like there is an AWS data center. Just imagine there is an AWS data center and there is a rack of spaces for the T2 micro. We are using T2 micro, so let's assume a scenario with the T2 micro. There are rack of spaces available for the T2 micro, hundreds of thousands of uh, processors available for T2 micro. Now, when I say I want to create an on-demand EC2 instance, at that time, what will happen? 
we are reserving a part of that uh, space of T2 micro for our AWS account for our EC2 instance. Now, similarly, when you try to uh, launch an EC2 instance with T2 micro, you will also use a part of that service. Now we are using totally using a part of AWS data center uh, space uh, space from the AWS data centers, a small part of it. Now that becomes a shared one when we are using a share when we use uh, sorry when we use a common rec space to uh, consume a data of AWS, then it's called share tenancy. And if you want to have dedicated your own custom resources then you can go with the dedicated one. Like if you want to have a particularly, you want to have dedicated EC2 instance that is not uh, shared with other AWS account, then you can have a separate dedicated instance. You can also have a dedicated host, like you can have an entire physical infrastructure separated from other AWS account. Uh, it's called dedicated host. In this dedicated host, you can create multiple EC2 instances. So in the tenancy, we have share, dedicated instance, and dedicated host. Whenever you say that you are shared uh, using a shared one, that is a default shared one uh, tenancy, it doesn't mean that you are sharing your data with other AWS account. AWS guarantees that whatever that uh, if you are using a shared memory or if you are using a shared tenancy, then your data is still uh, completely isolated to you. There will be no chance that a processor working in your EC2 instance will now then work to another EC2 instance in another AWS account. So it gives a complete guarantee that your data will be completely isolated and there will be a no mismatch or their data will not be transferred here and there with multiple AWS account. So by default, we'll go with the shared one. For dedicated instance and dedicated host, you will have uh, additional charges and you need to request to AWS to go for this. And the last option is T2 T3 Ultimate, Unlimited. So this is a new feature introduced in 2018. So basically what exactly it is, <clears throat> whenever you create a new EC2 instance, you get some credits. This is called CPU credit. Now for T2 micro instance, you have six credit. Once you have consumed all the six credit, you won't be able to uh, use this EC2 instance again. Now, one credit is equal to one EC2 instance running for 100% utilization for next one minute. If one EC2 instance is running for one minute at 100% utilization, then one credit will be consumed. So which means you have six minutes total if that EC2 instance is working at 100% utilization. Now, there will be a no chance or there will be a very difficult or very rare moment that your EC2 instance is running at 100% utilization. Basically your CPU utilization will be around 20, 30, 40, 50%. And during the high spike, it will go to 70, 80%. So there is a less chances of going to 100%, but whatever the consumption you are making, 10%, 20%, 30% of the CPU, you will be deducting that uh, six credits. Now, your, the question must be, if all the six uh, credits is uh, consumed, then what will happen to my EC2 instance? So, for example, you are running an EC2 instance with uh, let's say 20% of CPU utilization. So whenever that 80% of utilization is free, 80% of space is free, that 80% is continuously, uh, you know, working on something that will gain extra credit for you per millisecond. So for example, if that 80% of uh, space is free for let's say 100 milliseconds, then that 100 milliseconds will gain more credits that will be in decimal, but it will continuously start gaining more and more credits. So it will make the desired requirements like if you have currently six credits, then 80% of the free space will gain more and more credits and sometimes you will have seven credits, eight credits, nine credits, something. So when you go for the T2, T3, you enable this option. It means like even if your EC2 instance has reached to 100% utilization for the next six minutes, then you will get an extra credit that is a, you know, a credit from the Amazon to run beyond your burstable performance. Okay, it will, they will give you certain credits, two, three, four credits more 
and so that you can run uh, your infrastructure beyond your first level performance. So this will uh, have additional charges. You need to be very careful. Now in the advanced detail, you will have an option to enter the user data. Like we have seen in the bootstrapping, how to script the data, if you want to launch an Apache server with MySQL and PHP, you can write everything here and it will uh, install all the things before it uh, spin off the machine. So this is a part that we'll see in another session. We'll just go with the default one. Do you have any question in this section? Yeah, um, do you mind showing me how we can do the auto scaling here? Yeah, auto scaling we haven't touched yet. Uh, once we have seen the EC2 part, then we will go to the ELB and auto scaling. Okay. So add storage. So in this section, you can add multiple storage. Currently, this EC2 install will have a default storage of 8 GP. This is a minimum storage required for boot up your EC2 EC2 machine. All the EC2 install, uh, all the operating system and all this thing. So it will require minimum 8 GP. If you are going for the Windows machine, then 30 GB is minimum required. Now, if you want to add multiple EC, uh, multiple EBS volume to this EC2 instance, you can just add new volume and and add a number of data you want. Let's say I want to add 10 GB of additional storage. So I can go with here easily. This part we'll see once again in the EBS section how to separately uh, add an EBS volume. So next, add tags. In the tags, tags are completely optional. You can name a server, anything you want, like a production server. So you can just tag the servers. And then we have security group. A security group is a virtual firewall that will control your inbound and outbound transaction. For example, if your EC2 instance is handing uh, over a port 22 or 80, so all this port you need to define here. Whatever the uh, that EC2 instance is performing the action, all you need to define it here. So, for Linux, let's say. Now, to connect to your EC2 instance, that is Linux EC2 instance, you need to enable SSH, that is port 22. And here you can define the source, like from where uh, the request is coming, then you, uh, it should be able to allow that, that is inbound rule. Now, 0000, zero, zero, zero means anyone on the internet uh, who has a password, key and password, they can log into this machine. If you are working in your particular organization and the particular organization have a uh, you know, dedicated IP range uh, from 10.000 to 200, then you can define that custom IP address here so that only people from your organization will be able to log into this machine. If you click anywhere, then default will be 000. And the third option is my IP. That is, it will fetch my public IP of my host computer. And only the IAM will be able to log into this EC2 machine. Here you can add multiple rules. You can select it from here. Or you can just go with the custom TCP and you can define your own port. So if your EC2 is dealing with another, uh, you know, uh, outbound services on a specific port to fetch the data, to uh, get the data on a specific port, or your system is assigned or designed such a way to have access to the particular port, then you can mention that port here. So here we'll go with the 84, that is HTTP. So that if I am from the Apache server, I can be able to hit from the browser and see which of my data is working or not. Review. Okay, here we can go with anywhere. Review. Here, what are the things that you have selected? AMI, instance type, security group, we can review everything here. And click on launch. Now, a key pair is a encrypted password that you will require to log into the machine. So whenever you create a new uh, EC2 instance, you can create a new uh, key pair, or if you have a bunch of production account EC2 instance, you can have a dedicated key pair. So let's say demo EC2. And this is only once time that you will be able to download this key pair. 
we will never get have a chance again to download this key pair so make sure uh, once you have downloaded this uh, to keep this very uh, file very secure Then click on not easy to instance. So currently it is in Penny and this is all the description of the easy to instance like instance ID, then which type of instance I have used, in which ability zone you have created, security group, AMI, which AMI you have choose, set of details. And this is your public IP and this is your private IP. Now, this public IP will be used to log into the EC2 machine. You cannot log into machine, uh, machine with this private IP. You need to use always this public IP. The condition with the public IP is that whenever you reboot the machine, you will lose this public IP and you will get a new IP. That is, it's a dynamic IP. Whenever you restart the machine, this IP will change. Whereas this public uh, private IP is a static one. Until your machine is uh, available, you will have this private IP attached to this EC2 instance. It will never change. If you uh, if you you know restart this thousands of times, then also this IP will not change. So our EC2 instance is currently in the running state. So let's just copy this public IP and open the terminal. If you are using a Windows computer, then you need to download the PuTTY. We will look into that also. So here I will go with the directory downloads and my key pair was demo EC2 key pair. So first of all, whenever I download this new key pair, I need to give a permission that is ch more 400 and demo EC2 to, uh, key pair. This will allow this key pair to have extra permission of unprotected file. So whatever the permission that we give read access, write access. Uh, so similarly, this 400 will give them access to read, write, and be a publicly available. And enter. This is a one time that you need to do once you have downloaded this file. Then SSH hyphen I key pair EC2 hyphen user at the red public IP. Now the command to uh, now the command to go for a terminal is you need to provide the command ssh uh, what kind of command you are running that is hyphen i defines the delimiter through which key pair you want to log in that is this key pair you need to mention what is the default user of your uh, operating system that of your machine that you need to define our our user is ec2 hyphen user and where you want to connect that is the public ip so click enter. So it's taking a bit of time. I guess my public IP is changed. So what I will do, I will just check the inbound rules. And in the inbound section, I will just edit this part. And for the SSH, I will do anywhere. So type yes, and here we go. We have connected to our EC2 machine. There is Amazon Linux to AMI. We are using Amazon uh, AMI2. And here you can see EC2 hyphen user at the rate IP address is 172.13.31.10.15. This is our private IP address. You can see here, this is our private IP address 172.31.10.15. So you have actually connected to your EC2 instance here. Once you have connected, you can do anything now, whatever the application you want to install, whatever the application you want to deploy, you can do everything here. Let's say just install HTTPD. HTTPD is a package name for Apache server. So now install Apache, yes. So Apache is uh, installed. Let's start the service. HTTPD start. Now service is ready. You can just copy this DNS and open a new tab and paste it here. You can see that test page. This is running.
you can also check on your browser i'm just sharing the uh, dns endpoint here in the chat okay so what we'll do now we will uh, try to install one uh, html page that is bad in the public folder bad ww html so this is your public data whatever the application you want to install whatever the website you want to host you can just dump all the data into this uh, location this is your public directory or the apache server and here i create one file index.html and i will write a basic uh, file html h1 hi this is demo apache server So this is a basic HTML document I have created. And if I just refresh now this page, I will get the message. Hi, this is demo Apache server. Can you please try with that same link on your browser? I need to copy the link from- my... Yeah, I have, I have shared with your DNS endpoint in the chat okay yeah i can see that okay now if you want if i want to install a web, you know website my own website i can just deploy all the data to here and you will find a, a website like you have your company website or any kind of application you are running you can just dump all this data in this section and this is the endpoint of your EC2 instance, or you can say your server. Now, this endpoint you can map with your domain. That is, if you have any custom domain, example.com or anything, you can just map this uh, domain with this endpoint in the AWS RAW 53. We will study that later. And once you have mapped this service, whenever you hit to your domain, it will be redirected to this endpoint. That is, and you will find this, this uh, website. Hi, this is Demo Apache Server. If you have any website here, you will uh, you can go here. <clears throat> now, as I told you, this is a security that handles all the inbound and outbound connection. So this is our firewall basically. If I just remove this AT port, if I just make this AT port or remove this AT section and click on save. I will not be able to hit this uh, IP address or this DNS endpoint. So even if you try to hit on your uh, browser, you won't be able to get the data. <clears throat> you can try. It's still saying that it's connecting, connecting, but it won't be able to. So if you want to stop a connection at any moment, for example, you are having a DDoS attack or any kind of attack, uh, you, uh, hacker is trying to penetrate your system, then in short, uh, what you can do, you can just halt all the services via security group. You can just remove all the ports and nobody will be able to access your data. Not even your customers, but yeah, at least for a certain time until you found out uh, what exactly the problem was, uh, you can just halt all the services via security group. You don't need to uh, stop all the servers. Uh, basically, what you can do is just within the security group, using the security group, you can halt all the services via port. Now you can see I'm not able to ping this server. And the moment again, I just is add the AT port HTTP and save. And here you will see if I just refresh this part once again and this popped. So inbound and outbound will control all your things. Okay. Any question, any doubt here? No, I'm good. Okay. So once you have created an EC2 instance, what option do you have? Let's uh, click on action. And you can stop a server. You can reboot your machine or you can terminate this option. You have three options to do. In the instance setting, you can edit add or edit tags. You can just attach this EC2 instance to an auto scaling group. 
uh, where if this, uh, you know, uh, this kind of Ethereum instance uh, reached to 70%, 80% of utilization, then it will automatically create one more EC2 instance. So you can do such kind of things here, but we need to go through all this uh, load balancing and auto scaling in detail to do that. And you can attach and replace IAM role. That is, if this EC2 instance wants to have uh, communication with other AWS services, you can just attach this IAM role here. Change to emission protection, as I've told you. So let's see. Uh, at that time, we have enabled that option. So if that if I'm trying to delete this machine, terminate, I won't be able to see. This uh, button is completely uh, disabled. I'm not able to delete this machine. So if I just go to the instance setting and change the termination position and disable this option, now I will be able to terminate this machine. You can see, now I can terminate this machine. So this is the accidental deletion to protect your production EC2 instance. Then shutdown behavior, again, stop and terminate option, you can select. Change day to day three ultimate option that we have already seen the configuration page. Uh, you can change all the logs. You can get a system logs of EC2 instance while it was creating. Get instance screenshot is like a, uh, uh, this moment screenshot you will uh, capture in your EC2 instance. Then we have image that is creating your own AMI. So when you create, uh, click on create AMI, you can just name it as, now I have installed Apache and Amazon 2 on Amazon 2 AMI. So I just named that part here and uh, it will create a snapshot of your EC2 instance, whatever the application you have installed, whatever the package you have installed in this particular EC2 instance, you will have a snapshot of that particular AMI, including this AGB of volume. So which means whatever the volume, whatever the data is residing in your AGB of volume, that also will be copied. Uh, if you remember, we have just created one index.html file. So that file will be also be a part of this snapshot. You need to just click on create image and a snapshot is will be created soon. So what else we have in the networking section, you can attach and change the security group. Maximum five security group we can attach to a single EC2 install. You can attach or detach any network interface you want, that is Ethernet, car, etc. And you can go for the detail monitoring via this CloudWatch monitor. So the AMI that we have just created, you can see in the image section, click on the MI that is still pending, it's getting created. Now, few important points about the AMI and the snapshot, okay? Whenever you create an image, you create two things. One, an AMI, that is a template which will have a, uh, information about the operating system and other packages you have installed. And second, a snapshot, that is HTTP of volume snapshot that you have uh, created. So this HTTP of data, HTTP of volume will actually have the data that you are running and this template AMI will contain the information about what you are creating, okay? Once you have created, you have an option to, if you want to share with another AWS account, let's say for your organization, you have multiple AWS account. So you can share this kind of uh, AMI with other AWS account. Or as I have told you in the earlier section that there is a community AMI where Amazon, <coughs> Where different uh, companies sell their AMI. Now, if you want to do that, you can easily do via AWS Marketplace, or here from here also you can uh, select this option. Let's say you have created a specific AMI with the security or any other services of your product. Now, if anyone is trying, if anyone purchases that AMI, you can just give him the permission from here. You can just add the 12-digit AWS account ID here and give the permission. This is a private one-to-one -one from one AWS account to another AWS account. Now, if you want to share it publicly, you can just click on public and click on save. So what will happen? This Amazon machine image will be publicly available to anyone who wants to install this AMI. So you can do that. Here you can see this is owned by me. That is whatever the images you have created. That is for you. That is available for you. 
if you click on here and you can have option of private images which means like if someone has shared with you an image then this image will be seen here here you can see the public images so while the publicly images are available here this will be a very big list of uh, ami so you can just uh, use this public ami to launch an ec2 instance now if you want to duplicate an ec2 instance you have already created an ec2 instance with apache php and you have entered some data now you want to duplicate that ec2 instance to two or three more ec2 instances what you can do you can just simply create an image that is the ami and here you can just click on launch so again you don't need to choose an ami you will go to under further steps of choosing the instance type configuring ec2 instance adding the storage and etc things and your number of ec2 instances will be ready so in this way you can just replicate your ec2 instance you can replicate your infrastructure okay now the last important part of today's session is we have seen that this public ip will change that is this public ip is dynamic whenever you restart this machine this uh, part will be rebooted or uh, this part will be changed so there is a concept of elastic ip an elastic ip is a static ip that you are getting from amazon pool now taking an amazon uh, a plastic ip is chargeable and the charges are dependent on uh, depends on two factors first if you have created an elastic ip and you have attached to a running ec2 instance then you will incur a very minimal charge for that but if you have created an elastic ip and you have not associated to any ec2 instance or you have not associated to any running ec2 instance then you will incur a lot of charges for that because amazon ec2 elastic ip are very secured elastic ip pool you can say where is and very few elastic ips are available so you if you are using this elastic ip pool then you need to be very sure that you are going to use this elastic ip now for a aws account for a particular region you can clear maximum of two five elastic ip you can uh, you know uh, allocate a new ip address maximum five so to do that you can just simply click on allocate new address and allocate so this is the static ip that is allocated to you now you can just click on action and associate address to whom you want to associate that is easy to instance that is our server production account this is instance id and click on associate now if i go back to the east instances this IP address is changed to 13 to 34 to 24169. That is a static IP. Here you also you can see this elastic IP is changed. Now, if I reboot this machine thousands of times, hundreds of times, any other number of times, this IP will never change. So, if you are uh, if you are running a single server for your domain, then you can use this elastic IP to map it with your DNS so that if any guy if if your server restart then also it will not affect to that dns okay anything any doubt any questions no okay so that's all for today tomorrow we will see into ebs part how to attach multiple ebs volume and then we will look into elb and auto scaling okay oh, that sounds good okay then thank you so much for joining today Okay, thanks, Talib.